Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! The price of unbending focus. That is the second price. If you must ascend higher levels, not only in the spirit, but in life and in destiny, superior levels of exploits, ever increasing testimonies. The price of unbending focus. That is the second price. The price of unbending focus. Mm. Show me a man of unbending focus. A man who will not be distracted, whether by success or failure. I show you a man who will remain and increase. Philippians chapter 3, from verse 13, even to 15. Philippians chapter 3. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. He's speaking to brethren. We're talking about Apostle Paul here. Paul the Great. Paul the Anointed. Paul the Miracle Walker. Paul the Learned. Paul the Intelligent. Brethren, I count not myself. That means you can count me to have apprehended. But this is my honest review about my life. I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do forgetting those things which are behind he never said forgetting wrong things that are behind he never said forgetting thing good things that are behind he said forgetting those things that are behind and reaching forth to the things which are before ah there are always things before i press towards the mark of the price of the high calling of god in christ jesus he says let us therefore as many as be mature that's the meaning of the word perfect be thus minded how minded that means at any point in your life count yourself to not have apprehended are we together now that even though you are honestly receiving an applause justifiably so for the strides the kingdom strides you are making that you get to a point where you do not allow your focus to bend I count myself to not have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 7. I found this scripture and it was quite interesting. The Bible says, For the Lord God will help me, therefore shall I not be confounded. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know that I shall not be ashamed. There is a relationship between focus. Are we together now? focus and advancement there is a relationship between distraction and shame the price of unbending focus i wrote a few things here that i want you to see number one under the price for unbending focus you must obtain grace to fight arrival mentality arrival in quote you must obtain grace from god to fight arrival mentality. I've arrived at this level of anointing. I've arrived at this level of grace. I've arrived at this level of revelation. I've arrived at this level of prosperity. I have 10 estates. I'm a billionaire. I'm a politician. Finally, I've gotten to be a house member or senator or president or governor or whatever it is. I am now a CEO. I am now the African representative of this bank or this conglomerate. Arrival mentality has destroyed many people. Same Philippians, please. Give us 3 and verse 12. Let's read 12 and 13. Same Philippians, chapter 3, from verse 12. Philippians 3, 12. Okay, let me just pull it up here so that we don't waste time. Philippians... Hallelujah. All right. He said, not as though I had already attained. Either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I am apprehended of Jesus Christ. Verse 13. He says, brethren, now where we read, 
I count myself. So he's saying, it is not as far as I'm concerned, no matter what you tell me, I still walk like somebody who has something in front. I don't walk like someone who has arrived. You know what arrival mentality is? That means you get to a point where you tell yourself, I'm not talking of contentment. Arrival mentality is very different from contentment. Hallelujah. Where you feel there is nothing more to do with your life as far as maximizing life is concerned. You know that happened to Lucifer? I will ascend above the stars of God and I will be like the Most High. After all, my office is the custodian of the mysteries of heaven. So I think I know everything. Little did he know that there was more. Beware of arrival mentality. I wrote something down here. Both failure and success, both discouragement and over-celebration of results can be distractions. That means success and failure can do the same thing to you eventually. Failure can discourage you. Success can create complacency. While it is good and honest, to celebrate every stride, you must be careful and manage your celebration so that you do not over-celebrate results. Now, the truth is that when you rise among people who are lower than you, no matter how little, little your result is, it will look big in the eyes of those lower than you. You must be honest with yourself and gauge yourself by a global kingdom standard and then ask yourself, have I really gone there? In Africa, we celebrate very small things, small results, small results. In business, in ministry, you will see a little corporation that maybe is netting just a few million naira, even not even dollars. And yet the pride that the leaders and the executives have, respectfully speaking, no. Just because you can afford food to eat, just because you have a house, you have a car, just because you can afford a bit of luxury living and a few things, it does, that is not all there is to life. There is so much more. Are we together? The price of unbending focus. I talk to myself every time on this wise. Joshua Selman, thank God for what God is doing in your life. My phone is full of text messages from people literally across the globe without exaggeration oh man of god i listened to this this one happened and in all fairness they are not lying however you must tell yourself everything god has given me now is not all he plans to give me every level is the test for the next level every level as soon as you achieve something in a level know that it is automatically the exam you are writing for the next level Every level of achievement is the test you must pass for the next level. Are we together? So both failure and success. If you have done well and the world is celebrating you, don't run away, don't push it away and say, no, 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 don't celebrate me. No, no, no. But you must know when to draw the line. The moment celebration becomes flattery and is already planting the seed of complacency, you must stop and say, thank you. I have received enough to motivate me for the next level. My exams have started. You must know when the feast of celebration is over and when you've entered the classroom to write the exams. If you are still dancing in the classroom, believing that the classroom is a place for celebration, you will fail your exams. Thank God for this new level of the prophetic. Thank God for this new level of grace, this new level of insight. But now that you have given me, oh God, thank you for it. But I know it is an exam I'm writing. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Hallelujah. There are many, many little small prayer groups that will never grow into a giant kingdom platform for blessing the nations because right from infancy many of them are almost killing themselves on an on arrival let me tell you this I, i'm speaking particularly to those in probably ministry business and all of that let us be very careful let us be very careful let's learn from our fathers there is nothing that somebody can want that has not been given 
and yet these fathers you see them with humility including businessmen look let me tell you for those of you who have had the opportunity to sit with billionaires and very wealthy people you will be flattered by their humility and their sense of honor and respect and you'll be asking is it really is it these people are? and then the ones that don't have anything you will know immediately that they don't have anything are we together a wealthy man can enter a restaurant and is very cautious greeting people good afternoon how are you and somebody will tell you that's the owner of this restaurant oh. And you'll hear somebody who will sit down five minutes, he's impatient. You've kept me waiting here, you don't know who I am. You better, you see, you easily know when people begin to, when they lose focus and they lose vision. Listen, I don't know if I've taught it here, but if you study the life of Gideon, there were two tests that they had to pass to qualify the 300 who defeated the Midianites. When Gideon blew the trumpet, the Bible says 33,000 people came. But there were too many, God said. He said, no, I can't take these people to the place of destiny like this. Test number one, whoever is afraid, whoever loves and misses his home more than the future, go back. And the Bible says about 20 or 22,000 people went back. That means everybody was there. Hey, we'll make it. But some were already dead on arrival. They went back. And he said there are still too many test number two he told them you will get to the water brooks the water brooks was not at the beginning of the journey you would have to make some progress and he says study their behavior in the presence of that water those who bend and lap like dogs those are the ones that i want you to keep those who sit down and properly drink like human beings let them go back home do you know what that meant if you watch a dog and as it takes water it never takes water sitting or lying down it means and I'm, I'm aware that i still have somewhere to go this is a momentary success by the time you get to the water brooks after walking for a long time that is a sign of results now you have gotten water to quench your thirst and he said those who sit down that means they have camped i'm not standing up again let them go home their attitude those who lap like dogs that means they still have the sense of vision that this is just a momentary blessing but the real journey is not to i didn't leave my home to come and drink water i le left my home to go and defeat the midianites and if i find water on the way thank god but i will not come there and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you prophesy to yourself and we will never settle for less when we know there's more that's found in you price number two the price of unbending focus unbending focus can you still remember the vision of your ministry or you are forgotten can you still remember the vision of your organization can you still remember what you wrote on paper some of you have even misplaced the notebooks where you wrote the visions that govern your life because as at the time you wrote it you didn't have a business as at the time you wrote it you didn't know you would be this great you wrote many things there. Now you cannot even find the book. Buy another one and start again. If the words are really precious, you honor them by writing. He says, write for these words are faithful. Write, they are true. Hallelujah. Mm. If you don't have a vision for your life and the things that you are doing life will give you many visions useless visions that are inconsistent with the blueprint of your call for someone god is speaking to you get back go back home and open that notebook the way this ministry is going is that what god told us we started well but on the way they said if you are going like this you'll be hungry and he says so which one works now they say let me tell you the one that works now do this do that and you are veered off from what god told you and your covenant with god are we together on bending focus 
we need to become people of focus so that you are not distracted thank god for the great things but you must be at your vision thank god for food thank god for the blessings that follow destiny but never be distracted by them i listened to a video i watched a video years ago I think it was by late Steve Jobs. It was a video that they did in 1992 or thereabout. And it was then, you know, um, they were really very small. And he was doing a little training for some of the senior executives of his corporation then. And I listened very carefully to what he told them. He told them that our goal is, you know, I can't remember exactly what he said the goal was, but there was no mention of money there. There was no mention of fame there. There was no mention of reaching the whole world just like a human effort of becoming famous. They were never part of the goals. The goal was to be able, based on what they said, to at least be able to contribute to make the world a better place by offering whatever it is that they were offering. I said, no wonder they became great. For someone from beginning, you say, this life, my share, it must come. That's your goal. And you find out you won't go far that way because already you are already at the corridors of compromise because the goal is not the goal is not pure and not um the goal is not superior enough to guide your life and word of distractions forget about acquisition acquisition is tertiary the primary goal of lifting Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be concentrated. Let your mind be Holy God's fire!